Hello there everybody, Sam Strings here, welcome back to the railway and for the first time in years, welcome to another American locomotive unboxing and review. So yes, it's been absolutely ages since I last reviewed an American Loco, and not only is today's Loco an American one, I even bought it in, from America and had it shipped over to the UK, so you can't get any more authentic than that. So the Loco that I'm going to be showing today is this. It is a Mahano Loco, as you might know, and I'm just going to call it a standard 440, because try as I might, online I cannot find any photos of this in real life. Now that may just be me being stupid, that's very very possible, so if you know any different please do let me know. But as far as I can tell, Mahano didn't actually base this on anything in particular. I think they just made a generic looking 440 and did it up in a number of different liveries. A little bit like what Hornby Dublo and Wren used to do over here in the UK and then sell it to a lot of people. Now I could be wrong about that as I say, but uh, when I was looking up photos, don't get me wrong, I found loads and loads of different photos that look very very similar to this, but they all had something different. They might have had a different cab or different uh, condensing equipment on the sides or perhaps different domes on the top. I never was able to find anything that looks exactly like it. So yeah, this is from the Baltimore and Ohio, and again, I can't find any record of anything like this existing on the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, but uh, nonetheless, it's quite an attractive little loco. I didn't pay very much for it. I think it was less than £50, £48, I think, something like that, but then again, the postage and the import charges were a little bit expensive, but overall, I think it was quite a good bargain, but we'll find out just how decent the loco is. So let's get it out, and let's hope that it's good. And before I get started, I do want to say a massive thank you to Andrew Keeley, who's one of my friends over in America, and he was a big help in helping me come to the conclusion that this was just a generic 440. Okay, so let's take a look at the box. As you can see, the box isn't in great condition. You can see that the tender here has busted through the window in the front of the box. And basically what happened was I bought two locos from the seller in America, and that seller put them both into the same box without any proper packaging. It was just a sliver of newspaper, if I remember correctly, and then mailed them over here to the UK and subsequently it got bashed about quite badly and the tender burst through the front of the window there. Very, very luckily the damage was minimal. I think the only thing that happened was the smoke box door popped off and I was able to find it and put it back on. But uh, yeah, you do sometimes get that uh, with second-hand sellers. They do <laughs> tend to just sling them into a box and mail them without any proper packaging. Luckily that is very, very rare, but uh, yes, I was a little bit annoyed by that. But as I say, luckily nothing too bad happened. Okay, so let me show you the end of the box you can see that this is a 440 American Premier MH04 B&O which stands for the Baltimore and Ohio uh, so very little information really there and then also you can see it says sound just there now I'm laughing because Technically speaking, when this arrived, it did have sound fitted to it, but really what that means is there was a really cheap, nasty speaker literally wired in parallel with the motor, so, so that when you put it on the track and try it, it just made a massive, massive din. Uh, so needless to say, I duly disconnected that when I came to service it. Uh, goodness knows what had happened there. I, I can only assume that it used to have DCC sound on it, and somebody's taken it out and just wired the, the speaker straight across the tracks. Uh, so yeah, obviously no, somebody didn't know what they were doing, but uh, clearly I'm not disappointed that this doesn't have DCC sound because I only paid 50 odd quid for it. So with that, uh, let's get this beautiful DCC sound, I don't think so, loco out of the box and we'll see what this is like. And as I say, I'm reasonably pleased with this for how much it cost. Okay, so there it is. You can just about get a view of it there, and I'm going to lift it out. And quite interestingly, for a budget model, this does have the loco and tender connected together, uh, which I wasn't necessarily expecting. And uh, yeah, it even has uh, tender pickups, which is absolutely great. But there it is. And even though this might not be a particularly accurate model, and therefore it probably won't appeal to certain modelers, to me, who just loves a good runner and loves a good quality model, I really can't fault this. I just think it looks great, doesn't it? That's possibly because I'm so familiar with British locos that it's just nice to see an American one for a change. But to be honest with you, just the shape of it, the fact that it's a 440, and uh, really the livery, this Baltimore and Ohio livery is quite attractive. Uh, so yeah, really, really pleased with this one. Uh, hopefully you will enjoy seeing it as well. I'm going to put it up against my uh, white backdrop in just a second, and I'll show you some of the details up close. But for now, here's a little bit of history. It's going to be difficult, obviously, because I didn't find any particular information about this particular loco. But I will talk a little bit about the American 440s, because 440s were very, very important over in America. Okay, let's do it. 
So over in the USA, the 440 was always a very, very popular design. Originating as far back as 1836, when the first ever 440 example was built to the design of Henry Campbell. By the 1870s, the vast majority of American steam locos were indeed 440s. Over the years, the American type, and by the way, the 440 is known as the American type, was developed and improved, and they also grew considerably as time went on as well. By the time the 20th century began to approach, though, greater power was desperately needed, and so the 440s began to wane a little bit in popularity, although some railroads did continue to use the type for lighter duties. Now, this model supposedly depicts a more modern 440 design, and you can tell that just from the, uh, the size and the complexity of it, really, uh, but that's more or less all, all I can tell you about it. Now, to date, there are several American-type 440s in preservation, many of which are still in running order, but the vast majority are just on static display. Okay, so there she is then, my Baltimore on Ohio, beautiful 440 American type locomotive. And yeah, this is certainly not the greatest locomotive I've ever owned, but I have to admit I just absolutely love this thing straight away. I think of all the American locos I've been able to find and collect, I think this has to be my favourite so far. And don't get me wrong, there hasn't been very many, but uh, yeah, I think this one wins it for me. So if you didn't know already, Mahano were a brand that produced quite inexpensive budget locomotives for people just to buy, run and enjoy. And also, given the age of this, I think this was made in 1997, I wasn't expecting an awful lot. I was expecting it to be, you know, bare bones, very, very simple. And in some areas it is, but there were certain features of this loco that have really, really impressed me. Uh, first of all, all of the wheels are metal, as you can see. A lot of the time with the cheaper budget locos, especially from America, you tend to see plastic wheels, but that's not so with this. And that just, that small touch really does make this thing just look like a more quality model and less of a budget model. Also, there's quite a lot of separately fitted work going on here as you can see you've got this uh, very very complex piece just above the running board there which is very impressive but that also includes a whole array of separately fitted metal handrails as you can see you've got a big one along the side there and then just above the cow catcher at the front there you've got a metal piece so separately fitted work is quite impressive as well this loco has also got a light just above the smoke box there a lot of the uk models don't have lights so that is quite new and unusual to me but i do apologize to any american viewers watching who to them it, that's just a a, a box standard normal feature and obviously the other thing I really really like about this is the fact that it does have tender pickups as well I wasn't expecting that but that really does bring out a lot of stability in it okay so let's take a close look at some of this then uh, the livery is obviously quite basic it is a pretty much a plain black locomotive but you have got the running number 822 on the side of the cab uh, which is nicely applied and by the way looking up number 822 doesn't actually bring up any results so no idea to be honest with you whether that is real or not but certainly in model form it doesn't bother me it's it's uh, just a nice looking logo to be honest with you isn't it there's also a really really impressive level of molded detail as you can see along the side of the boiler here it really is complex there's all sorts of different pipe work and things going on uh, it's a lot more complicated uh, looking than a lot of the UK models are I don't really know why that is but uh, yeah it certainly does look quite complicated doesn't it and also just look at the front of it there's so much complexity going on there the smoke box door is relatively complex and then down below you've got some steps down to a lower level there and just look at all of the detail there and I just love that texture that's been applied to the plastic, that metallic texture. It really, really does look good and effective. Also on the top of the loco, you've got all sorts of different domes and things, including this bell, which has been separately fitted and separately painted. It doesn't go round or anything like that. I think my Berkshire had a bell that actually worked. Uh, well, it didn't, it didn't ring, obviously, but it did move around on its pivots, which was quite good. But no, I think that's fair enough that it is just a, a static piece. I suppose that would make it a little bit more durable. And then just in front of the cab, look, you can see you've got these separately fitted wires or pipes, which are coming out there. They're quite a nice piece. And then you've got this, which I think will probably be a generator. Obviously, Obviously the British locos or some British locos won't have had that because they didn't have lights but as this loco does have electric lights uh, obviously it stands to reason that it would need a generator and I think that's what that is there so yeah I think it would be a steam power generator wouldn't it which is quite cool. Now the cab has also got metal handrails as you can see they're quite nice and below the cab you've got quite a bit of metal pipe work going on which is quite good to see and inside the cab although none of the detail is painted you can see that there is quite a lot of detail going on inside there so if you were steady enough I suppose you could paint it up and make it look quite impressive. But outwardly, the cab doesn't have any glazed windows or anything like that. Once again, I don't really know whether many American locos did have glazed windows or not. I'm not 100% sure, but certainly there are none on the model. 
Now underneath the model you can see you've got quite a high running plate here which means that you've got a good view underneath the loco and in fact there is quite a good amount of detail around the wheel set as you can see most of it is just moulded onto the uh, the chassis or the body but it looks all right doesn't it and uh, also you can just about see the pickups on the wheels which does spoil the illusion a very small amount and here's another thing that's a little bit less good as you can see there's quite a large gap between the loco and the tender which obviously isn't all that realistic but again I don't think realism and accuracy is uh, was much of a consideration when this model was made but given all of that as I say I can't really help but uh, really really enjoy it so that is the loco hopefully that's a good little overview the tender is similar really in terms of detail of course you've got the Baltimore and Ohio lettering on there which is once again very nicely printed for a budget model and also there's an awful lot of riveting going on if I get a shot of that you can just see the amount of riveting going on there and also just look at the size of that coal bunker that has to be larger than the coal load in most British tenders uh, so that's very very impressive and of course don't forget that this loco is HO scale and not double O scale so in fact it is scaled down very slightly compared with the British stuff and yet it still looks absolutely massive doesn't it it is a very very large 440 probably the largest I've got maybe excluding the school class and the D16 and that sort of thing so anyway back to the tender if we look around the back you can see that we do have more of these separately fitted handrails which is great to see and then you've also got these sprung knuckle couplings and these are the better ones these are slightly better ones I've got some that are just static and uh, they don't couple very well but uh, that one is fully sprung and fully articulated and it seems to work really really well so we'll have to try that later on but yes as you can see it's a relatively nice tender uh, there's not an awful lot going on in terms of detail but I really do like the fact that it does have those tender pickups which we'll talk more about in just a second and of course as we know there is the facility to fit sound to these if you really 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 want to but unfortunately you will need some sort of decoder unfortunately you can't just solder a speaker in <laughs> parallel with the motor and expect it to produce sounds it has been tried with this model though it seems anyway let's get this down onto the track then and we will get onto some performance and see how she runs all right, so there she is then down onto the track looking super, super smart. And now let's talk a little bit about performance then. Now I have had this apart to service it when I first got it, so I know exactly what this is like inside. The mechanism in the Loco is actually really quite nice. It's good and simple. It's just a can motor with a worm drive on it, which goes straight down to the axles, uh, which in some Locos is all you really need. And yes, indeed, it does work very, very well in this. Sadly, there is no set of proper bearings on the driving wheels on this. They do just sit straight into the chassis. But at least the little slots in the chassis are round so it, you know it's reasonably reliable but I suppose it would have been better with the bearings but also the driving wheels have pickups going to uh, both wheels which is quite nice and as I've already mentioned quite a few times the tender does also have pickups now the tender doesn't have full pickups it's just the front bogey here picks up uh, from one rail and then the back bogey picks up from the other but that is just enough to give the loco the stability it needs especially over points and things so with that then let's get this started let's try a little slow crawl and see what it's capable of doing Turn this up very slowly. As you can see, it is crawling backwards really, really quite well. Now, this uses the same size motor that a lot of the Hornby Locos use, specifically the O4Os and quite a few others. And so, actually, it's very easy to find replacements. I'm pretty sure it is just a three-pole motor inside here. But as I say, I've got plenty, which I think would fit, which are five-pole. So maybe if something goes wrong with this one day, which it might not, uh, maybe I will be able to retrofit it with a five-pole motor and uh, perhaps that will improve the performance. However, as you can see, that slow crawl can't really be complained about, really, can it? It's very, very good. It is a little noisy. Now, the mic is right up close to my mouth, so I don't know whether you will hear the noise. I can try and get closer, but it's, it's certainly not overly loud. There we go. No doubt you would have heard that. There we go. And actually the pulling power is quite impressive as well. I don't know how because as I say the, the bodywork is plastic, it's relatively light, not terribly light but fairly light and yet it still has quite a bit of pulling power. Anyway, here's what she's going to be hauling then. They are some hopper wagons. I think there's just six of them. They're not from the right railroad, I'm afraid. I think they're from the Norfolk and Western, but they do at least match in terms of colour and I think they look quite nice with her. So let's see if she can haul them then. I'm hoping so but uh, you never know, so let's reverse her up and get them coupled. Yeah, nice and easy does it. All right, so you might have noticed that the light didn't come on on the front there, and that's because there's a diode in series with it, so it only comes on when the loco is going forwards. So with that, let's see if we can't get that to light up, shall we? And we'll see if you can haul the hoppers. Right, if I just turn it up enough, it should just about come on. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. 
hopefully you saw it there. So yes, the light does work, and that's quite a nice feature, I think. I do like seeing lights on my engines. There we go, and as you can see, she really is a nice, stable runner. Now, since I love 440 so much, I thought I would introduce her to some of my British 440s, and so that is the theme today, so see which other 440s you can spot on the line. Here's the first one, though. This is the D16 in the LNER lined black with some LNER teak coaches, or X LNER teak coaches, I should say. There we are, and then on the inside line, I have the Midland Compound by Backman. Here it comes now, also a very, very lovely loco. So enjoy the running session and see which other black 440s you can spot, as well as the odd one out. If you spot it, let me know in the comments. So needless to say, I am really, really pleased with this. When I paid what I did for it, I couldn't help but expect that it was just gonna be a little bit rubbish, to be honest with you. But as you can see, it really isn't too bad at all, is it? It runs very, very nicely. The detail is adequate. And once it's up and running, it just looks the part. It looks great. So. Yeah, there are issues with it. I don't think it's particularly accurate, and it is quite a basic model. I don't think anyone could deny that. But at the end of the day, I enjoy running it, and it looks great, so I can't really fault it. There goes the D16. Actually, looking at it, the D16 is very, very similar in size to the uh, the American one. And of course, the, the American one, as I said earlier, is HO scale. So that just gives you an idea of how large they are. But no, let me know what you think. Was this worth £48? My answer is absolutely yes. I'm very, very pleased with this for £48. And I'd be very, very happy if we could get value like that all of the time. That would certainly do me. Blimey, everything arrived at once in that shot. Sorry for all the uh, the blurriness there. <laughs> Wasn't quite expecting that. All right then, so here are some of my ratings on the Mahano 440 American type locomotive. So detail, yes, quite obviously the detail on this isn't up to the ultimate modern standards that I normally look at on this channel, but actually given how much it cost and given the age, it wasn't really too bad. But I have to be accurate here and give it a three out of five. The performance though is really, really good. For a relatively light 440, it does have surprising pulling capabilities and also it is capable of doing a very reasonable slow crawl. The mechanism is also pretty good. I think the mechanism is also worthy of a four out of five because it does have those tender pickups and it just has a nice simple mechanism which works really, really well. So I've given it a four out of five there. Would have been better if it had proper bearings in the chassis though, but that's really the only criticism. Quality then, four out of five. Yes, it isn't too bad at all. It is all plastic construction, which I think does affect the quality a little bit. But once again, the very low cost of purchasing one of these does remedy that quite a bit. So the value then, as I say, 48 pounds. You can't go wrong with that, can you? Even though the import postage was quite a bit, I think that is really, really good. So five out of five there, not too bad at all. Incidentally, I don't really know what the RRP would have been for these, but I hope it wouldn't have been too expensive. So overall then, we have 7.92 out of 10, a very reasonable score there. Into the ranking it goes. There we go, just third above the Oxford Rail Janus and below the Hornby J50 there. Yes, overall very, very impressed with this. And I'm also very pleasantly surprised by how well this runs as well. Uh, I'm sorry to say this if anybody's a big Backman fan, but uh, it does work a lot better than a lot of the uh, more expensive Backman American locos that I have. Uh, there's just something really, I think the fact that it isn't split chassis helps, of course. It does actually have proper pickups, unlike a lot of the older Backman ones, so I think that is probably what does it. But uh, yeah, a beautiful runner, as you can tell.
All right then, folks. Well, that will just about do it for today's review. I really hope you enjoyed seeing another American Loco for a change. If you'd like to see more American Locos appearing on the channel, do make it known in the comments, and if I get enough people asking for it, I will definitely do some more before very long, hopefully. But for now, once again, thank you for your company. I hope you enjoyed it, as always, and I will see you very, very soon. Cheers, everybody.